Hi, I was able to make the oil fly. Every day I'm bombarded with comments about a video from my Russian comrade Krosan, if I pronounce it correctly. I bet you've seen it. He has made a tower that creates around half a million to a million volts or higher doing a series of super dangerous experiments so much that even I was worried for their lives. Actually based on their page, if Google Translate did its job right, seems they are from Ukraine living close to the Russian border and there is a war close by. So good luck guys. And then there is this magical video where the high voltage in oil makes the oil fly. What is this true? Roll the intro. The rectifier. Huh, yeah, that intro sucks. Anyway, I watched a bunch of his videos and he has a ton of good videos and a bunch of very questionable ones like the Wi-Fi shotgun or the wireless phone charger from the power lines or the microwave gun which need their own rectifier video. But I'm more interested in his high voltage device and the flying oil experiment because unlike the other ones, I believe this one is a real experiment with real results. This experiment is very dangerous, but I decided to do it anyway because it's fun and there's a good chance that I may survive. Also, I like the experiments you can do with high voltage. I have made a Vandograph machine in my past video that generates around 200,000 volts. The problem of this device is that there is not much energy backing that voltage and the voltage quickly dissipates. It's a safe device they use for show and tell in science museums. But to make oil fly, we need power. And that's what makes this device very dangerous. What Croissant does is that he creates super high DC voltage with his contraption using some mysterious salvaged parts. Based on TV's voltage multipliers, UM927. But I don't have access to sketchy old Russian technology, so I have to make my own. There is this circuit called a voltage multiplier that's made of some diodes and capacitors. I have even seen a very interesting video from Join the Technicians who actually made a high voltage static wand putting many stages of voltage multiplier circuit together with a neat driver. But I don't have time for neat stuff, so I'll be driving my circuit using my microwave transformer and shove it into a PVC pipe. Let me tell you how it works. You probably know that a diode is like a check valve. If you put a positive voltage across it, it passes the electric current through. With some voltage drop across it, typically around 0.7 volts, which depends on the type of diode and the amount of current through it. But if we put a reverse voltage across the diode, it blocks the electric current and acts like an open circuit. Now a capacitor passes AC through and blocks DC. Of course, if we load the output of the capacitor, its output voltage drops due to the impedance of the capacitor. Now if we put a capacitor and a diode like this and give it some AC input, when the input is above zero, the output follows it similarly above zero. Because the voltage across the diode is reverse and it's open. Now if the input AC voltage goes below ground, the voltage across the diode would be forward biased, which means it turns on and clamps the output to around zero volts and it stays on all the way until the negative peak of the AC. This reverse current through the circuit charges the capacitor with a positive DC voltage equal to the peak of the AC. So now when the input AC goes up, the output is shifted up like this. And of course, if the output voltage is not loaded, if you start drawing current from the output, the output voltage drops. Let's look at it on the scope. I'm probing the live 120 volt AC input and I have my capacitor and diode here and I'm probing across the diode. Now if I connect the circuits together, wow, All right. The polar capacitors are no good for reverse voltage. Fine, I have a bunch of ceramic capacitors. Let's try it again. I have my one nanofarad ceramic capacitor here and if I connect it, okay, it's shifting up but not quite as high as the 170 volt peak of the AC I was expecting. I think my one nanofarad capacitor is so small that even the impedance of the probe is pulling it down. So in theory, if I disconnect the probe, the voltage should go back up. But you get the point anyway. So now we have an unloaded voltage that looks like this. If we feed it into a puny single diode rectifier and a capacitor, 
when the input voltage rises the diode is on and the output rises like this too but when the voltage drops the diode turns off and the output across the capacitor remains constant like this if it is unloaded of course if I connect the two stages together they'll load and affect each other and the output rises more like in steps with every cycle of the AC until it settles and here also I'm ignoring the voltage drop across the diodes assuming that I have a very large input AC okay now I have the entire circuit and if I connect the AC input well that's awful the yellow is the AC input the green lines is supposed to be the shifted up AC that's heavily loaded now and the blue is supposed to be DC apparently the probes are heavily loading these signals because the capacitance is quite small I think the output DC rises a little bit so yeah the probes are heavily loading the signals I have some 16 volt 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors I can run these on low voltage let's try these okay I replaced my capacitors with much larger but lower voltage electrolytic capacitors now let's connect the input to some 5 volt AC and see what happens <laughs> that's exactly what I'm talking about see the yellow is the AC input the green is shifted up AC and blue is settling stepping into some DC level beautiful of course you see the effect of the diode drop much more because the voltage levels are much smaller if you need to see this stuff for yourself you need a keysight scope I'll give away two of these at the end of the video so with this circuit the output DC voltage is almost equal to the peak to peak voltage of the AC input and that's assuming that the diode drop voltages are negligible and there is no load and if we flip the diodes instead of a positive DC output we get negative output now I drew the same circuit like this and drew another one beside it we can cascade these circuits connecting them like this the AC is transferred through these top capacitors and the DC is stored across these bottom capacitors the DC voltage across each one of these capacitors is almost equal to the peak to peak voltage of the AC input so each one of these stages adds one peak to peak to the total voltage my transformer running on 120 volt input outputs around 2000 volt RMS which is 2800 volt peak or 5600 volt peak to peak so here I made three stages of the circuit using 6000 volt 1 nanofarad capacitors and 4000 volt diodes of course 4000 volt wasn't enough for my 5600 volt DC so I put two diodes in series the three stage should give me around 17,000 volts this is a super dangerous circuit I'm especially nervous powering it up after the incident <laughs> So never try this experiment and the wand guys used 100 picofarad capacitors which makes it 10 times safer than mine but I thought I needed the power in order to make the oil fly okay let's stand back and power it up Ooh, do you hear the crackling noises let me bring my microphone close oh my god Ooh. That's the sound of the high voltage charges running away. Eventually, we will have to isolate the circuit well to avoid leaking charges because they will load the circuit and lower the voltage. The series. Ow! F Shit. Damn it. Remember, even after disconnecting the supply, the capacitors still hold charge. Cascading the circuit stages puts capacitors in series and the total capacitance on DC side of my circuit would be at minimum around 1 nanofarad divided by the number of stages which results in lower capacitance and higher impedance That side fumbling was effectively prevented See at the third stage the arcs jump this far At the second stage the arcs jump a shorter distance but there is more current on the first stage it's even shorter but much more current and at the input much oh, well you get the point now I want to put 20 of these stages together to get around 110,000 volts it is much less than croissant's voltage but it should jump between 2 to 5 inches depending on humidity and sharp edges and such let's put it together Here's my diodes. Now I have to solder the capacitors. Okay, here we are. Let's run it and see what we get. Expecting super high voltages. Uh, well, that's nothing. 
Oh, it seems like the leakage in higher stages is so high that it's loading the voltage and it's nothing significant. And henceforth, I shall shove this inside the PVC pipe stand I made with the wires coming out of the bottom here. And this is a pretty nice and round doorknob I found as the end contact, which is pretty good for high voltage purposes. Now I completely seal the wire hole with silicon and then I fill the PVC pipe all the way to the top of the circuit with canola oil because it's healthier and that's all I have. Oil is a very good insulator against high voltage. In fact, high voltage switches or transformers like this car ignition coil, which I made a taser with, are filled with some sort of oil to avoid arcing between the contacts and wires. There we are, and power too. Let me bring my ground globe close. Ooh, yes. It's definitely much stronger than the Vandograph, but it seems it takes longer to charge. Two things suck about my circuit. One is that my capacitors are much smaller than croissants, so it's much easier to load them and the voltage doesn't rise to my satisfaction. And the second is that I'm running on 60 Hz while both croissant or joint technicians run on tens of kilohertz. As you saw in the scope, it can take close to 10 AC cycles for one stage to charge and much more for 20 stages. At higher frequencies, the circuit would charge much faster and can handle the load much better. Whatever, I guess I'm stuck with 60 Hz for now. Let me see if I can charge my body. Put my legs up. Oh, I can feel my hair rising. Ow! Something zapped me right in the ass. Well, anyway, let me see if I can make the oil fly. I have two small cups. One is connected to earth and the other one I'll connect to my high voltage. Okay, there we go. Oh, look. Oh, look at that. That's a lot of spray, it's peeing all over the room. It's funny, when I bring it close, see, it disturbs the surface of the oil. And even without touching, see, the oil is just shooting out. Look at this, isn't it beautiful? I don't think I even need this ground cup. It just flows out. <laughs> Look at my ball. So why the oil flies, you ask? It's not conductive, but it can pick up static charge under high voltage, same as how a PVC pipe is charged when you rub it with a towel. So when the cup of oil is heavily charged, the oil molecules repel each other and jump to the opposing charge, and that's why they fly off. Now this is interesting. See, even though the oil is not connected anywhere, it's reacting to my grounded body because the oil itself is charged now. Now what happens if I ground the oil on one side and bring the high voltage close? Ooh, look. It's pushing the oil all the way to the ground. Ooh, shit. And of course, high voltage messes with all the oil here. And charges it up. See, I told you not all croissant videos are fake. So isn't this tower much smaller and stronger than the Vandograph? Don't make it though. Make the Vandograph if you value your life. Giveaway time! Something funny happened in the previous school giveaway. Thanks to a happy accident, they received five Keyside scopes instead of one. Keyside generously let them keep it. They are a big school with many students, so they'll use it. But they hit the lucky jackpot. I picked another school to receive one oscilloscope only thanks to Keysight and some other tools I'll purchase thanks to the generous support of my patrons at patreon.com. And one more scope goes to the patrons and viewers. So become a patron to support the school giveaways, my channel and be in the draw or just enter the draw from the link in description. Thank you!